Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. So, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush recently passed away, and he was, I believe, the 42nd president. Um, and there was a great article in The Intercept, and I just, the ignored leg legacy of H.W. Bush, war crimes, racism, and obstruction of justice. <laughs> yes, he helped obstruct justice in the Iran-Contra thing. Um, he ran a racist campaign, the Willie Horton campaign, and when he ran for president in 1988, was so racist. Willie Horton was a black man that got out on furlough and, you know, raped a white woman and just, hey, white America, Dukakis, and it happened, I believe, in Massachusetts where Dukakis was governor, and it was like, hey, white America, Dukakis is just letting scary black men out on the streets. It was so offensive and so racist. George H.W. Bush did that. So well, we're all talking about how great he is. And, you know, any president, uh, when they die, they need a big, they need, they should have big ceremonies and stuff like that. But we should, you know, he wasn't a private guy. I was like, don't trample on a man's grave, you know, when somebody passes away. Well, he wasn't just somebody, he was president of the United States. And when Jimmy Carter passes away, we should have the same um, fair reflection on his presidency and what he did. He didn't do this kind of evil shit, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but I just can't listen to all of this stuff. He loved America and served with character, class, and integrity, uh, tweeted former U.S. attorney and hashtag resistance icon Preet Bharara. According to another former president, Barack Obama, Bush's life was a testament to the notion that public service is a noble, joyous calling and he did tremendous good along the journey. It's a big club and you ain't in it, right? Isn't that what George Carlin always said? Apple boss Tim Cook said, we have lost a great American. All right, you want to talk about how he served in World War II as a fighter pilot? All right, absolutely, absolutely. That was noble what he did. That's, I, can't, I can't begin to know what that must have been like putting your life on the line as a pilot in World War II. Good for him. But he ran the CIA. <laughs> so let's, let's, be, let's not all whitewash when everything was so great. I say talk about it all. When I die, I hope a bunch of friends of mine, first of all, I want my ashes scattered at the beach near me where I surf with Putin every day. And I want my friends to just have a nice... Um, you know, get to get like an Irish wake without the, the drinking and the fighting, but like tell stories about me. Tell stuff that I did for, that pissed you off. <laughs> tell the good stuff too. But I was never, and I never will be president. This was a president. So when, when president's decisions that president makes affects a lot of people and sometimes for decades to come. So... We can't just say, oh, he was so great and let's all, you know, raise a glass and honor this fantastic American because not everything he did was great. Um, and this is what they said. He was a public, uh, not a private figure. Only one of 44 men to have ever served as president of the United States. We cannot, therefore, allow this, his actual record in office to be beautified in such a brazen way. When a political leader dies, it is irresponsible in the extreme to demand that only praise be permitted but not criticism, as my co colleague Glenn, Glenn Greenwald argued, because it leads to false history and a propagandic whitewashing of bad acts. Yeah, sorry. This show's about the truth, man. I just want to get to the truth. And I, you know, to be fair, yeah, he was a World War II vet. Good for him. And then he did Willie Horton. And then he obstructed justice as vice president during the Iran-Contra hearings when he was VP to Reagan. Sorry. Sorry. That was awful and fucked up. Um, Bush told the American public that Iraq had invaded Kuwait, the first Gulf War, without provocation or warning. What he omitted to mention was that the U.S. ambassador to Iraq April Glaspie had given an effective green light to Saddam Hussein, telling him in July 1990, a week before his invasion, we have no opinion on the Arab-Arab conflict, like your border disagreement with Kuwait. Wow. Have anybody else named Bush lied to the American people to get us into a war in Iraq? 
I can't remember. Um, then there is the fabrication of intelligence. Bush deployed U.S. troops to the Gulf in August 1990 and claimed that he was doing so in order to assist the Saudi Arabian government in the defense of his homeland. As Scott Peterson wrote in the Christian Science Monitor in 2002, Citing top-secret satellite images, Pentagon officials estimated that up to 250,000 Iraqi troops and 1,500 tanks stood on the border threatening the key U.S. oil supplier. I remember that. I remember hearing that in the news. Yet when reporter Jean Heller of the St. Petersburg Times acquired her own commercial satellite images of the Saudi border, she found no signs of Iraqi forces, only an empty desert. It was a pretty serious <laughs> fib, Heller told Peterson, adding that Iraqi buildup was the whole justification for Bush sending troops in there, and it just didn't exist. Thanks, Obama, for letting us know he was a fine American. Sorry, I just can't handle the lies and the hypocrisy. It just makes my stomach turn. I can't fake smile. Yay, they do. I can't listen to people on the left tell me how great the bushes were. Ugh. I can't hear it. I can't hear. It's bullshit and it's wrong. It's wrong. By January 1992, Beth Osborne uh, DePonte, a demographer with the U.S. Census Bureau, was estimating the Bush Gulf War had caused the deaths of 158,000 Iraqis, including 13,000 immediate civilian deaths, and 70,000 deaths from the damage done to electricity and sewage treatment plants. DePonte's numbers contradicted the Bush administration, and she was threatened by her superiors with dismissal for releasing false, false information. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah, Scooter Libby. Remember that? Remember those clowns? Wow. And then all this crap of like, he was, you know, classy and presidential, which are all digs at Trump. Yeah, Trump is a fucking jackass. He's offensive and vulgar. But do you think these 70,000 civilian deaths? 70,000 civilian deaths. We lost 58,000 soldiers in Vietnam. 70,000 civilian deaths. Do you think they give a shit about Trump's tweets or, or HW's uh, being presidential? Thinking of the people who's, who've lost loved ones from Obama's drone strikes give a shit? about how classy and presidential he is. I've always said it. Trump is just the most vulgar version of what presidents have been doing for a long time. He refused, refused to cooperate with the special counsel the, in the Iran-Contra affair in which the United States traded missiles for American hostages in Iran. That's classy. I wonder how classy that tweet is. Um, and used the proceeds of these arms sales to fund Contra rebels in Nicaragua, did much to undermine the presidency of Ronald Reagan, yet his vice president's involvement in that controversial affair has garnered far less attention. The criminal investigation of Bush would, was regrettably incomplete, wrote Special Counsel Lawrence Walsh, a former Deputy Attorney General in the Eisenhower administration, in his final report on the Iran-Contra affair in August 1993. Oh, that's right! Never forget! He was part of Iran-Contra. He escalated the racist war on drugs. In a televised address to the nation from the Oval Office, Bush held up a bag of crack cocaine, which he said had been seized a few uh, hours ago in the park across the street from the White House. It could have easily been heroin or PCP. What happened was federal investigators lured a drug dealer into that park so that he could make that point. It's happening across the street. It's out of control. Crack, the ghetto drug. 
you know, blacks, dangerous, Willie Horton, that was his whole vibe. The war on drugs, started by Reagan, pushed through by Bush, and then who got tough on crime? Oh, Bill Clinton, our liberal hero, Bill Clinton. Put a bunch of black men behind bars, just like Bush and just like Reagan. Once again, it's a big fucking club. You're not in it, I'm not in it. Here's something I didn't know. He groped women. Since the start of the Me Too movement in the late 2017, at least eight different women have come forward with claims that the former president groped them, in most cases while they were posing for photos with him. One of them, Rosin Corrigan, told Time magazine that Bush had touched her inappropriately in 2003 when she was just 16. I was a child, she said. So let's say, that's awful that he did that. I don't doubt that he did that. But let's say we don't know about this. Okay. Fine. 70,000 civilian deaths. How many people did he put behind bars? And he's a creepy groper. This is the thing they'll argue, well, he probably didn't do that. And she's just a Democratic operative. See how they do that? Then distract you from all the actual horrible stuff he did. I mean, this is horrible too. This is very horrible. <laughs> uh, how many people's lives has this guy ruined? How many people are in jail because they had four ounces of cocaine on them and they're in jail for 15, 20 years? Iraq? 11 years later, his son took us back to Iraq? and killed even more people. Only the downside is, is we have, in addition to the million Iraqis we've killed and destroyed and the lives we've ruined, all of the vets who've come back. The vets, the, well, the soldiers, the, the military that, have, that are dead, the, the 22 vets a day that kill themselves, it's all thanks to this clown. He helped ramp this up. So, If you're a politician, you're a public figure, and you were like the president, you had so much influence over so many people's lives, sorry man, your, your life doesn't get whitewashed when you pass away. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't. Somebody has an alcoholic parent when they pass away. That shouldn't get whitewashed either. <laughs> It shouldn't get whitewashed. I'm sick of it. Let's shine a fucking light on all of it. Thanks for watching, you guys. Go to my Patreon page to support the show because I'll shine a light on this. YouTube is demonetizing. That's what the, I, I don't... Without Patreon, I couldn't do the show. So watch the ads all the way through at the beginning. Don't press skip ad. And even for a couple of bucks a month, you can support the show on Patreon. It really helps. It really helps. You get in for, you can get bonus content. You get early access to the podcast. A lot of cool stuff. I'm going to be going on the road a lot in 2019 with Ron Placone, and I'll, I always post exclusive, like behind the scenes videos of Ron and I in the car or backstage at the club that I only put on Patreon. So you get that, Patreon supporters. So thanks for supporting the show, and thanks for making Gotham great again. And all my tour dates, January. We're doing progressive comedy tour in Florida. Gainesville, Coral Gables, uh, Orlando, Jacksonville. Come check them out January 9th through the 12th at GrahamElwood.com. Also doing a Stay in Your Lane comedy show in Tarzana December 22nd. Come out for those shows. They're a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.